Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 8 January 2017. And wow, take a look at the cutlery in front of the Apostle P camera tonight, would ya? These are a couple examples of uh, mid-tech production knives from a maker you may or may not be familiar with. His name is Zoe Christ, who has recently relocated from North Carolina to Escanaba, Michigan to be part of the Mike Stewart affiliate program. I'm not sure if that's the official name of a loose alliance among brothers in blades, but <clears throat> you've heard me talk about it before. And Zo is an integral part of that group. Mike has a grand plan for world domination and it centers around the Gladstone, Escanaba, Michigan area. Few of us know this. Some of us are old enough to remember that in the first half of the 20th century, the Gladstone area of the Western UP was uh, essentially the capital of fixed blade knife making in the world, at least in the United States. <clears throat> it was an area where from raw material to finished knives, everything was done in the community. There were manufacturing companies, there were steel processing companies, there were uh, machine shops and, and knife making shops, all who worked together and formed an economy in Gladstone and a robust economy going into the making of marbles and knives and other, other makers as well. Well, it was so successful that in post-war Japan, as, as we were uh, rebuilding the nation of Japan as part of uh, well, what we do because we're Americans, we vanquish enemies and then help them recover and uh, organize their governments and society around freedom and capitalism. And as we were assisting Japan, showing them how things were done here, uh, some pretty smart Japanese guys really focused on the Gladstone area because Japan, as you know, has a rich and storied cutlery history. So they basically modeled the Gladstone Escanaba area into a knife making center in Japan where different parts of different uh, of the knife manufacturing process were done by small boutique businesses who were all sort of interconnected and they, they forged an economy in this little town called Seki City. Ever heard of it? I think you have. But how many of you knew that the model for Seki City was Gladstone, Michigan? And that's what Mike's trying to put back together. And Zoe Christ, whom we're going to talk to you here in just a minute, is a, an extremely important part of this project. So. Without further ado, we're going to have a little conversation with Zoe, who is both a knife maker, an expert blade grinder, and one of the best forgers of premium Damascus steel in the world. You're saying, what? I haven't heard of Zoe Christ Damascus. You will, my friends. You will. And it's going to be making its way into some very recognizable production knife company names this year I predict so let's enjoy a little conversation with Zoe one of the nicest most gracious and gentle men I've ever met I just love the guy um, I think you will too so get yourself a cup of coffee and get comfortable and we'll have a little talk with Zoe in his brand new shop here it is guys hey guys we are in the new knife factory of Zoe Christ, custom knife maker from North Carolina who moved to Escanaba, Michigan. How on earth did you ever decide to do that, Zoe? Well, just uh, my association with Bark River Knives and Mike Stewart and actually helping me to kind of uh, learn the mid tech line and we got an enormous amount of business and um, it just seemed the right place. I like being around other people, other knife makers, and so it was very inspiring. And me and Matt and Jesse and Dan Tope, and we just like to talk knives all the time, so it's easier to 
to hang out with friends that like to talk knives instead of sitting in your own shop by yourself and talking to yourself in your head. So. It is. It's easy to show up in Mike's office at 9 o'clock in the morning and find it's 5 o'clock and you haven't done anything all day. Hey, isn't you it? You hear about the entire history of marbles or black jack or something. Yep. <laughs> so this building, is it's like a... Uh, from a, a local commercial real estate guy, old associate of Mike's, right? commercial lease, and he built you a building. So he was going to develop this property, and he wanted to bring more knife makers to the county. So he, I said that, you know, we were looking to relocate. We weren't necessarily happy. We were kind of a little bit nomadic, and he said, you know, if I built you a building, would you come to Escanaba? So I said, yes. And um, he said, well, I will give you free reign to build whatever you want to build. Wow. So he let me design the building. I mean, I did the rooms. I didn't do the doorknobs, but I did everything <laughs> else. I mean, every outlet. I mean, it's been we've, been, we've been working on this for about six months, and we're just finishing this week. So. And as we walk through, you guys are going to be amazed this is only six months. And we've had to deal with it because we are in the city limits and we are in an, in, in an industrial complex. We've had, to, uh, we've had to comply with a lot of things. So this is our fabulous break room. Wow. For just me and my wife. But because we're in the uh, industrial park, we have to have a break room. Because so, someday you will need it. Yes. And we will. Come two months, we're going to need probably eight guys so really yeah that's awesome so this is our break room this is our mechanical room ladder. Oh. furnace water heater ladder yep. all brand new so we have air conditioning in the office space for the office ladies this is actually I've kept this room blank because we homeschool our children. So this is going to be the schooling room. So when my wife comes in here, we're going to do the homeschooling here. The kids will play in here while I'm working out in the shop. That is so cool. Welcome to our new bathroom. <laughs> With a shower. This is the executive bathroom. Right. Right. And now we were going to have a black shower. But they would not sell us the door separate, so we had to buy a whole new thing. So Ken found this gold-plated shower, uh -huh. which we got for dirt cheap. And um, I hate going home covered in soot. So that is pretty cool. My you wife can, hates me coming home. So you can be clean when you walk in the door, because you know knife-making places, forge, forges, aren't the best-smelling stuff, are they? So this is my office. So I plan to have shells, and I have this window. So the can... crucial keep an eye on all your employees' window. Exactly. Right? So. Gotta have that. Let's go film it. And then this. Well, who do we got? This is, is this custom knife maker, Dan Tope? Oh, Dan Tope just walked in. How you doing, man? Good, Dan, how are you? Good. Helping out your buddy? Yeah, so I was always willing to help everybody else out, so I figured it'd be a good time to come over and help and get some of this stuff in order. That is one of the things about this community that just blows me away. You, well, do you even think of yourselves as competitors? No. Not at all. No, you're like this big More family like who makes knives, yeah. yeah. More like partners. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. And you all have, you know, attributes and skills that benefit each other. And right. Everybody's different, so everybody yeah. can benefit from each other. We can all make a living and take care of our families and make really cool knives. So. And maybe help make the Escanaba Gladstone area a thriving industrial center once again. I think it will be. For sure. So this is what we just moved all the machines into. And I have months worth of unpacking. I bet you do. Hundreds of boxes and I need to build shelves and everything else, but I'm just so happy and blessed that we have everything here in one place. And um, I think we'll be up and starting to produce some stuff by next week. And so for guys who aren't familiar with your work, not only do you make custom knives and mid-tech versions of your customs, Correct. you are also a forger you and specifically of superb Damascus steel right so I make Damascus steel I make high-end custom knives I make mid-tech knives I make regular custom right. knives 
So I pretty much run the gamut. We make Damascus beads, rings. We make anything having to do with metal. Let's not forget about Viclad. Oh, and Viclad. We can't keep that out of there. Viclad? Right. What the heck is Viclad? Formerly known as San Mai. Uh huh. Um, but this is a little bit different. Since you're not a samurai or a ninja. Or. I'm not allowed to say that. Or a different knife company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose owner's initials might be LT? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And the company might be CS. Yes. <laughs> That'd be cheap. <laughs> so, so it's not San Mai, it's Viclad. Right, Viclad. So where'd we get the name Viclad? Um, it was kind of a, we, we all had talked about different ideas. It's more of a kind of a Nordic Viking. Ah, Viking, gotcha. Yeah. So, so as you're getting rolling here, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, to get the money rolling in, the first priority is going to get the Damascus steel production up and running. Yeah, I have three new models coming out probably this month and the first week of February um, of knives. And then the Those steel, will be mid techs probably? Those are mid techs, okay. yes. And then we're going to be doing um, the Damascus, which is going to be starting eh, more or less next week. I say we'll be into full production by the middle of February. Awesome. So, right now it's a matter of setting up machines, getting inspections done, getting wiring finished, ordering materials. I have enough materials to start producing. We have enough power in here. Um, I'm dealing with the permitting office on some of the issues with the forges and stuff. So there's a few little, you know, hiccups we have to overcome. But overall, we're going to be producing very quickly. That is awesome. So let's kind of take a look at what machinery we got. Would you st should we start in the forging area, you think? Start wherever you like, my friend. I'm following you. All right. <laughs> I mean, I use a combination of hammers, pneumatic hammers. A couple of them are not in here right now. Um, hydraulic presses. Uh -huh. and, uh, obviously, most of these are home built. Uh, rolling mill, TIG welders, MIG welders, uh, Blanchard grinding, so we've got that a rotating part. head with what, four stones on it? Four stones, yeah. And, and then a huge magnetic bed. With 500 pounds of force on that magnet per square, inch. per square inch. Those are Bark River trackers. Yes, they are. Right saw manual surface grinders, um, a couple more automatic <clears throat> surface grinders, drill presses, small little prototyping CNC mill. Um, Grinders, buffers. Stereo, got to have the stereo. You got to have yeah. the stereo. And many things that are still packed in the crates. And steel. And steel. And lubricants and tools and everything else. <laughs> so your Damascus, do I remember this right? 1095 and 15 and 20, is that? That's one of the mixes. One of your mixes? Uh, 52100, 01. Um, uh, Hitachi Blue, 410, um, stainless is AEBL and 410, AEBL 420, AEBL 304, um, we have a lot of different mixes, and Mokume, um, brass and copper. Now when you're doing Viclad, uh -huh. have you sort of settled on a core and a cladding for that? I have, I'm going to wait to talk about that uh -huh. until I release it. It's a secret. It is a secret. <laughs> well, this is well, We beautiful. spent a whole lot of time and a whole lot of engineering doing that hood and that ventilation up there. That was, if anybody has done sheet metal work or welding, you can understand how yeah. complicated all those bends and things were to do that. The uh, gases that come out of that, those processes are pretty toxic, aren't they? Yeah, not really, but the county 
and their issues with it. The county thinks they are. Yes. Right. I have always worked in a shop. I mean, I mean, the flux is what creates more vapor than anything else, but it <coughs> dissipates quickly. Um, we have other ventilation in here, but they we have to exchange the air in this entire building every 20 minutes. Wow. So that's why we put that big hood and that thing up there. What it does is it takes outside air, reheats it, blows it into the building, and then that thing takes everything that that thing just did and sucks it back out. Uh -huh. So you can imagine my energy bill. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you weren't able to, you weren't able to get Mike to pull his Jedi mind tricks on the people who regulate these no, sort of I things. I tried, Mike. Can't, but <laughs> if I knew where <laughs> Obi Wan, oh, he's dead. <laughs> but Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, like, where are you? <laughs> oh, these he, are not the droids you were looking. He's for. got them all convinced that none of that <laughs> dust in the air at Bark River is remotely <laughs> harmful to anybody. <clears throat> <laughs> well, Zoe, thank you so much for the tour. Well, thank you, sir. And, and guys, keep your eye out uh, There's those retailers who are DLT Trading and NineShipFree.com. All right. So his next mid tech run will be coming soon. How how long do you think before I'd they start coming? I'd say coming? we're going to have the first one out probably around January 15th, and then we should be finishing the run right around February 7th. And what kind of three new models? What are they going to be generally? Um, we have a backpacker series, which is a kind of a small bushcraft knife, um, and then we have a. It's, I, I would say it's more of a bushcraft with more of an artistic handle, uh -huh. and then we have that same one about um, with a slightly wider blade and about an inch shorter. And that's a companion to it. So, gotcha. You'll see him soon. That'll be great. Thanks for the tour, my friend. All right, thank you. Y'all have a good day. All right, see you guys. Yeah, see, I told you. Isn't he just the neatest guy? I, I love him to death. Uh, now, Zoe has moved his wife and two children, whom will be homeschooled in the shop. As you saw, there's a, a room for that. Um, Zoe doesn't have a factory job that he works during the day or you know he doesn't sell cars at a dealership during the day and then come home and make knives at night. All of his eggs are in this basket of making Damascus steel and making knives. He's just bitten off a huge investment uh, in this building and moving equipment. All that equipment you see in the shop basically he had trucked up from from North Carolina that bill was huge and I guess that was almost two months ago uh, so for a couple months over Christmas Zoe didn't have a paycheck uh, and he's got some supply chain problems right now for his next run of mid-tech production knives uh, keeping him from getting product finished into retailers hands and getting a check so I would really appreciate it guys if you'd keep your eyes peeled on knife ship free <clears throat> I think DLT trading when you see his stuff um, please support him he he, uh, he needs to get some money rolling in and you will not be disappointed in the product and we're going to do reviews on these two knives in the next couple days as well the scout camp knife and the goshawk um, <clears throat> two ends of the fixed blade spectrum and he just does phenomenal work so Keep your eyes open and uh, support Zoe. He needs it, and you will not be disappointed. That's all for this one, guys. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp. <laughs>